Hello, we're here live, episode 28 of That Boy Bent. I'm your host, John Mantis. To the left of me, we got the big dog, the Siberian Husky, Colin. Before we get into our guests, our main presenting sponsor, Black Can Tickets. If you're in the Colorado area, or really any area, looking to get some tickets for special events on a great discount, great prices, Black Can Tickets are the guys to be. Hit them up. Tom Mantis sent you, give you a great deal. We'll get into it later in the show. We got a bigger dog in the house, should I say, in the car, in the Chevy. We got Adrian Yenez. What's going on, bro? Oh, man. What's up, man? Nothing much, man. Just had to get in the car, man. Don't want the dog barking too much, man. Uh, got annoying last time. What kind of dog do you have? Yeah, I got a little chihuahua. So once that thing is going, man, it's hard to oh. stop. Dude, they're evil. Oh, yeah. This one is the uh, is the nicest one. And it, it only barks whenever she wants love, food, or wants to go outside. It's like having a girlfriend. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Adrian is fighting Randy Costa, who was on our show a few months ago. They're fighting July 24th. They were actually, I'm correct, they are supposed to fight a month ago, but there were some marijuana restrictions going on. Oh, yeah, it should have been this weekend, honestly. Oh. Uh, we did. Over here at uh, 262 here in Houston. We signed to fight July 24th, but we both kind of like had a like handshake agreement over social media agreement that we would, we would fight at UC 262 if a fight fell off. And three of them fell off. Texas commissions, they have that marijuana policy and pretty much it kind of just screwed everything over. I don't really smoke because I, I feel like it's a hindrance in, uh, in my cardio. I'll do it like right after a fight, but they're like fight camp or anything. I try to abstain from anything that kind of like diminishes. I feel like would diminish and I don't feel like smoking is not good for the cardio and all that stuff. Good for, for endurance. So a uh, part of me is like originally upset, but at the same time, I, I get it. Some people need it. Some people like I'm, I myself don't. I just take some melatonin for help me go to sleep and all that stuff or just any type of relaxing like chamomile tea. I keep it very simple. Hey, melatonin is the hardest drug I've ever done in my life too. <laughs> the 10 milligram went from five last year to 10. We're, we're going up would you say that marijuana is like kind of a more of a common thing in the like well just in mma community or is it kind of like half and half type thing i believe it's more of like a half and half type thing i feel like half people use it half people don't some people we want to use it for like recovery sleep and all that stuff but uh, one of the coolest things that that's happened for me is that the aura ring it's helped keep track of like my sleep like after a fight i drank alcohol it helped me fall asleep i would see that it was a hindrance on my sleep but then whenever i did the same thing with uh, with marijuana or weed like I would get longer sleep but the quality of sleep wasn't good for some people I feel like they might need it they might need that extra little thing uh, but on my end it was a little bit of a, of a hindrance of course like uh, celebration or anything like that yeah but it's not legal in the state of Texas so I, I feel like a lot of UFC fighters do 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 it and that's why whenever it comes to like that's why another another little conspiracy theory on my end that's why I feel like Nate Diaz got pushed back to UFC 260. Mm. That's my conspiracy theory on it, because, you know, that guy's all about smoking and all that stuff. So for other UFC fighters that need it, man, more power to you. Just try not to get caught if you go to the state. Yeah, I mean, the routine you're doing is obviously great. You're 13 and 3. You have, you got how many? What's your win streak right now? I got a six-fight win streak. Do you think you've been getting these wins from your incredible hands or from your Dr. Pepper obsession? Man, it's a, it's a bit of both. My hands make them see the doctor, you know? So it's it's all. And at the end of it, you know, if I get the win, it just makes makes me be able to buy two times as much Dr. Pepper as I would. So obviously, like, it gives me more incentive to want to go out there and knock people out. So it, it's a mixture of both, man. I got I to gotta give credit where credit is due with both. Have they reached out to you about a partnership or anything? Still radio silent on my end. We reached out. Oh. Uh, honestly, I just went the old school around and just buy stocks in Dr. Pepper just so I can be like, I own, I own you. So it's, it doesn't matter whether you sponsor me or not, I own you. So that's Did I see correctly, you made your UFC debut just like October of 2020, is that right? Yes, yeah, so October 31st, uh, 2020. Okay, so you've had, what, two fights so far? This will be your third in the UFC? Yeah, that'll be my third in the UFC. Wow, staying wow. busy. Staying busy. I'm, try I'm trying to, man. I'm try I was trying to stay busier. I was trying to stay a lot more busier. Uh, like my fight was back in, uh, October 31st and I had to wait all the way to March. I actually wanted to fight in January, February, and then get a fight like right now and then have another fight, my fourth fight in July. Like I wanted to stay super busy. I don't think that's the plan that the UFC kind of wanted. I guess they want me to uh, build up a little bit more. I do. And I don't like it. I do like it because I get to grow and like train more, train more for fun, get to like adapt and learn more. But also why I don't like it is because I wanted to be like really, really active. I wanted to go for five fights in one year. So that's exactly what I I was going for but uh forms i had whenever i i made my debut so now like my last fight in march it was like pretty flawless so you know if i if i if 
I get full training camps like that, like how I did, and able to perform like that, you know, it's just going to make it all better for me. Two KOs too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was. I love the head kick one. I've always wanted a head kick knockout, but also the one punch, the walk-offs are always, like, fantastic. Like, I always loved every single time Mark Hunt would knock somebody out with one punch and just walk away. Like that, like, I always admired that. Like, I, I admired, like, the Crow Cop head kick all the time. Like, anytime I see a highlight and the Crow gets the Crow Cop head kick, I'm just, man, like, you know he's going to do it, but he still knocks you out with it. At the end of my career, I want more walk-off KOs than more cut. That's what I'm stri- striving for right now. I assume you saw Weidman's injury. Does it, like, ever impact you, like, throwing kicks as far as, like, do you ever think about that? No, man, uh, I have thought about that a lot. Uh, especially uh, whenever I was working a full-time job. I never really wanted to throw any kicks. That's why I was, like, so hands-heavy. I knew that I fought on Saturday, Friday to Saturday. I knew I had to go back to work on Monday. So I was like, man, my legs are going to be trash. I don't care if my arms really are. That's a much easier thing to work around, but your legs just being gone for about a week, it makes work suck so much. Like after the contender series and then after my actual UFC debut, I was always thinking about it. I was like, man, I don't want my leg to get trashed. Like I need, it's full time now for me. So I really don't care. I'm like, all right, I can put my body through a little bit more worse stuff. But also on that wide wing kick, they can't be like straight, like tie kicks, like to the thighs, man. You mentioned that you're working a full time job while um, competing, what job were you working at? How did you, what did you say? Like, fuck it, I'm going to stop working and start making, fighting my full-time job. I decided I was going to quit right after my contender series. I was the asshole uh, of the city. You know, I was like, like anytime you didn't pay your water bill, I was the guy that was shutting you off. On my end, I hated that part of the job, but it was also necessary. But the people that I worked with were great. Uh, But the actual job itself wasn't great. It was like it sucked but also it was like kind of like a bittersweet moment when i quit because i absolutely loved and adored the people that i was working for great people uh but also it was sweet as in like man i'm not going to be that asshole anymore that comes around and everybody talks mess to about turning their water off damn so you were turning off people's waters and now you're turning off people's like light bulbs in their head <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a good way to play it man there was a couple times where uh I, I wanted to punch somebody in the face, man. I wanted to. Oh. I wanted to so bad. Like, it, it, this guy was nuts, man. Like, he was always on the list. The first time I was there, like, he got cut. And then the next time I had went around, dude, he got close. And I, a part of me was like, hey, if I hit this guy, I'm getting fired. And also, I'm getting arrested. And I'm getting charges pressed on me. Another part of me was like, just hit this guy, man. This guy absolutely deserves it. Like, you're just doing your job. You're not, like, it's his fault that he didn't do, like, do it on his end. On his end. I just remember just being like, oh, man, I, I'm, I'm this close. I was this, this close, man. I was like, I was literally about to punch the lights out. But good thing my, my coworker called me and was on the phone while this guy was in my face. Because if I would have punched him, I would have had a great alibi. Uh, luckily, it didn't come to that. But, man. There's a time to do it, man. It was definitely that time. Have you ever seen the water boy? That's the way you gotta do. You got when you're in the ring with Randy Costa, you gotta picture that guy's face on his head and it's knocked his fucking ass out. That's all you gotta do. Especially with how friendly me and Randy are being. I might have to pull that back out. Well, Randy's been nice to us. We had him on our podcast not too long ago, but just like you, we have been with him too. He uh I don't know where he unfollowed us on Instagram like two or three weeks after we put his podcast out. So when that happened, I told Carl, I said, we're getting Adrian right now. We're going to be Adrian's biggest fans, and we're going to support him, bet on him, and do it all. Let's go, cool, baby. All because of an Instagram unfollow. That's how petty we are. <laughs> that ain't right, man. It's too much work for me to unfollow somebody. So for, for me to actively go out there and look to unfollow someone, I'm like, man, man, you suck. <laughs> it was cold-blooded, man. It was wow. Yeah. Well, he also has terrible taste in candy, too. So, you know, that guy, that guy's a little bit out there, too. That was the other beef we got. Yeah, candy. Dude has the simplest palate taste ever and wants to sit there and talk trash about 23 flavors. Are you kidding me? He <laughs> sit there and loves chocolate and peanut butter. Not even the good the good ones at it, man. It's the worst peanut butter also with the worst chocolate, dude. Come on, man. You can literally go to the store and buy some really good dark chocolate and some really good peanut butter, high class, and make 
a thousand times better uh, peanut butter cup. So, hey, just yeah, for yeah, fuck this dude. Yeah, screw that guy. My God, I'll be waiting all week to get off my chest. Yeah, we we're going back and forth on Twitter with each other just not too long ago. All playing games, and people were like, Costa, the type of guy to delay the walkout because of his hair is uh, he had to go comb his hair. He was like, uh, Jan isn't the type to say that eggs go good with Dr. Pepper in the morning. Right, that's a good one, but also at the same time, you think I'm taking that as an insult. It's a compliment on my end, bro. I mean, <laughs> shit, eggs go good with everything, damn near. Then also, I hit him back with Costa, the type of guy to have his own a picture of himself in his own wallet. This is the beef we've been won. Everybody on MMA Twitter's been loving this, this this Twitter beef. Everybody's like, it's so wholesome, man. Like these guys are pretty cool. But a part of me is just like, is like, just wait, man. I'm waiting. Hey, Mantis, I got a quick question for you. Yeah, I'm still a virgin. <laughs> uh, sorry, man, can't help you there. But have you ever tried to run an event or have something going on where you're trying to sell some tickets for it and you've been absolutely hammered by high fees? Yeah, it actually happened last Saturday. I got a guy who can help you out. What's his name? His name's Kyle Martinez. He runs Black Can Canyon tickets out of Colorado, but the best part is, even though we're in Indiana, he works all over the United States. If you get a hold of him, he'll be able to help you out with all your ticket solution needs. All 50 states, the whole country? Exactly, man. All 50. I'm surprised you actually knew the amount. But yeah, the best part is, uh, you know, you reach out to him. He's got an Instagram handle, Black Canyon Tickets. You go to www.blackcanyontickets.com. Tell him the Ben Boy sent you. You know, even if it's not you or I, any of our listeners tell him the Ben Boys sent you his way and he'll get he'll get you hooked up. That's incredible. So I call them at 970-765-8188. Kyle or somebody else will hook me up with some nice students. That's exactly right. Kyle's the man. So you, you give him a shout. He'll help you avoid the high ticket fees that the guys like StubHub and Ticketmaster hit you with. And he'll make sure you have a good event and a lot of fun. Well, that's all I can ask for. I mean, you know, me, I'm sure I'm going to bring a date to a, a festival this summer. How, well, I probably just go alone, but now I go alone knowing I got a great deal from Kyle at Black Chain Tickets. All right, yeah, Black Chain Tickets, the official sponsor. Hit them up. Is it more motivating when some guy's just being an asshole? Like, I want to go and rip this dude's head off? Or is it more like it doesn't really matter to you? Man, for me, it, you don't have to motivate me to fight anybody. Like, I'm just a guy that loves fighting. And uh, I feel like you shouldn't need motivation to fight anybody, especially like in the UFC. You shouldn't need motivation. If you have to find motivation, I feel like this is not the sport for you. If you it's like this guy's talking shit to you and then all, all of a sudden it motivates you to go fight, talk trash to me, talk nice to me, be whatever, man. Because at the end of the day, I'm just like, dude, we're going to have to go in the cage and fight anyway. So I really don't care. We can be friends afterwards. We don't have to be friends. It's like To me, it's like we can go on like we never existed against each other. I really don't care. Or we can be the best of friends. It doesn't matter. Like it. There's, there's a lot of things that can go on. Like uh, this last time around, whenever I fought Gustavo, there's nothing but respect on my end. And uh, like going into the press conference, going into fight week, I was kind of listening to his interviews just to catch some insight to see where his head was at. And it's, he was just pretty much just like talking shit. And he was like, where did this hype come from? Just talking a lot of shit. And I'm like, he's like, I'm going to drown him and all that shit. And he's like, who is he fight? And all that stuff. Just talking, talking mad shit. Just being like, a part of me looked at it as like, he's, he's being disrespectful. It's like, he's letting all these people just like get under his skin. And for me, you can say whatever you want. I'm still going to go in there and fight you the same way I was going to fight you. But I'm good. Cause I know, I know it's just enough that you're going to go in there and try to either uh, break a bone, break a bone on me, uh, try and knock me out. You're just going to try to hand me an, uh, hand me another loss. So on my end, I was like, I got to stop all of that from happening. So it's a job to me and uh, I'm happy I'm doing this. So you don't have to motivate me. Quick shout out to my trainer, Ryan Coleman. Now, Ryan Coleman is a personal trainer located in Robert, Indiana. You can find him at, at Ryan Cole Fitness. Tell him Manson sent you via DM, comment, whatever it may be. And you'll get two free personal training sessions from him on him. But really on me. So hit up Ride Cole Fitness located in Broderick, Indiana. If you want to lose weight, gain weight, gain muscle, whatever it may be, he's a perfect guy to get your health and your mind in a better place. I'll tell you what, man. While you don't need really any motivation, I need some motivation. So we're going to go to our segment called Mania with Mantis. I'm a 24-year-old virgin. I've made out with a few girls here and there. You know, I've I've seen some ass at strip clubs, but I've never like, you know, I've never gotten to the, the home base, never hit a home run. So we always asked our guests advice on me to just get her home. In this case, do a, a TKO first round. How about that? Oh man! So legally, I, legally, <laughs> legally, legally, yeah. legally, legally, legally. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, nothing, no, no. Always consensual. Look. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's a numbers game, man. It's a numbers game. My coach told me this a while, a while back. You can, you can get ninety-nine no's. But you'll get, you can get one yes. It's a numbers game, dude. You can get one out of 100. You still got that one out of the 100. So, hey, 
it's a numbers game. You just keep going af- after it and after it. The first one says no, just don't even act like it bothers you. Just go into the next one. I know on my end, I wish I had that advice earlier. It's like I would have been, I would have been uh, going after a little bit more, but I was always like nervous. I was like, nah, you say fuck it, you get the fuck it in you, and then you just go after it. Just ask, just start asking around, man. Talk, then smooth it, smooth it over, and then you know, go on do your thing. Man, I've gotten that advice so many times. I just wish it worked for me. <laughs> I gotta be honest. It's like Jay Z on to the next one at this point. Look, even if it goes one to two hundred, dude, it's not, it's, at least you get to swing at the bat. You know, you get to swing at the ball a little bit. You know, just you got to keep it's a numbers game, man. You got to keep it up. You might be on fifty right now. You still got fifty more to go. Fuck, <laughs> that's a workout right there. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate that, dude. This is our last question that we asked for all of our guests. Have you seen my physique? No, I haven't. All right, one second. Hold on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, bros. <laughs> you have to say it with a book. That's all right. All right. No, I'm just like, you just, I don't know. That was just funny to look at. You just stand up and you just like... And you're just turning side to side. I was like, are right, okay? Like, what, what am I supposed to do with this information? You're at the school boys in elementary. No, nah, man. So I have this uh, condition. It's called it's BDS, right? It's, uh-huh. It stands for big ditch syndrome. So when I was born, <laughs> my back gave out and my cock's so big. But what it actually is, <laughs> it's actually an undiagnosed condition. There's no name for it, not scoliosis, none of that. But my brand is Bent, B-E-N-T. And it's really, I, for me, like my physique, I'm a really good basketball shooter. I'd obviously stand out. So we always ask our guests, whether it's from a UFC standpoint, mentality, whatever, what does Bent mean to you? Huh. Bent. Huh. There's a lot of means. Huh. Bent, bent from, uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, like B E N T, bent. Yeah, yeah. So uh, people, so I'll say this: people will use bent as like a way to get drunk. They'll use bent as like a a, a lifestyle. It could be how you're feeling. It could be whatever you think of. Man, I don't know. I, it, like, anytime I've heard it, it's usually been like, "Hey, get bent, like, like fuck off, like type of deal." That's the <laughs> like that's the only thing I could probably hear, like is like the slant, like sit. Uh, lean, uh, like the stuff that they teach you in uh, in elementary and middle school, like to sit better and all that stuff. So, like, uh, to me, like, I just think of like get fucked or something like that, get bent, you know, go, go, like, fuck off, you know. So, that's that's the way I, I hear it. So, you're the first one to say it, bent, to, to fuck, to fuck off. I like that, yeah. <laughs> I wish my elementary took me, told me how to sit up straight, but you know, that's why the education is so, so fucked up. But you're already here, bent is to just so Randy, get bent. <laughs> there it is. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna tweet that to him uh, later on. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. <laughs> I'll retweet. It. I'll do everything. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Oh shit. No, I'll, I'll send you a photo of me like my bent ass body. But yeah, hey Randy, get bent. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, it's that fucking kid again. And I'll be like, yeah, fuck you. It's two on one now. Three on one. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Absolutely, bro. We appreciate you on having you on, man. We'll be cheering for you July twenty fourth big fight and everyone who's tuned in can follow adrian on twitter instagram just it is at yanez mma yes, Good deal. best of luck too kick some ass oh yeah man absolutely especially for that unfollow man i got i got to yeah. yes sir yes sir Damn it. hey when you when you walk off when you walk his ass off be like i'll follow that bitch <laughs> <laughs> i will venmo you whatever you want if you do that <laughs> <laughs> Also, he'll send you a nude if you do it. Damn, nude. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. All right, peace. Peace out, Hey, is that boy bent?